You're a very important guy in this space, man. People love you. And they hate me, too. <laughs> <laughs>you already know what it is it's your boy laid back man welcome back to the channel we are back here live with the first episode of the big gloves podcast man if you know anything about big gloves especially in the boxing world you know it's time to put in that work when you're in there training and they tell you to throw them big gloves on you already know what that means we're gonna be sparring we're gonna be doing something physical you know what i'm saying it ain't just gonna be tactical training and stuff like that so with that being said, man, welcome. This is gonna be a exclusive, super dope, super fun show, man. We got a lot of stuff going on. We got special guests coming in. We got special co-hosts coming in. Of course, I'm your host, laid back, you know, on every episode, you know, but we will have some special guest co-hosts that's super knowledgeable in the space. We also will have fighters on here as well. I got a couple fighters that wanna come on the show, man, and talk about their perspective and talk about different things about the, the fighting world. And of course, Everybody want to know about what Layback going to be doing as far as is he going to be fighting or have I been training or have I been doing anything or have I just been dropping eye emojis under everybody's tweets? Well, yeah, you will see. Um, but we'll talk about all that later. Also, so just to introduce the, uh, the podcast and let y'all know what it's about, we're going to be covering influencer boxing. We also gonna be covering traditional boxing. So we're gonna merge the two, you know what I'm saying? We definitely gonna talk more so about the influencer side, especially around, you know, the first guest I got, you know, we're gonna talk a lot about that, but we gonna have some fun. And so, yeah, so we're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff. We're gonna be talking about the Canelo Charlo fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna make my predictions on that and see, let y'all know what I think about that fight. But also we're gonna be talking about Misfits, Kingpin, all that, you know, especially uh, with our first guest that we got coming up. So if you wanna be a sponsor of the show, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you go to Big Gloves Podcast at gmail.com, man. Make sure y'all reach out to us. Also the merch is gonna be at Big Gloves Podcast as well. And it should be under this video, you know what I'm saying? The merch is so new, it haven't even came to my house yet. Like it, it's, it's shipped. And it hasn't even came yet so by the time this video come out it still probably ain't gonna be here yet but you can order it under the video you know youtube got us so welcome also if you're a fighter if you're training we're gonna be reviewing and reacting to your footage man so you can send in your footage to the show as well big gloves podcast at gmail.com now i'm not no expert you know what i'm saying but i have been working on my craft and i am active I'm gonna say that, you know what I mean? And so like, if you wanna get some shine, man, if you're a trainer, if you're a fighter, you want us to go in there and, you know, watch and tell you what I think about it. I'm just a man, but still, you know, you can send that in. It's gonna be something fun for us to do in the community and for us to check out different fighting styles and just bring my own special twist to it. But look, man, I'm excited about the journey. I'm excited about where we're going and I'm excited about our first guest. Big dog. We got a big dog on the scene, man. And we will be bringing him up right after this. Welcome back to the Big Gloves Podcast. I am your host, Laidback, and I got my special, special guest with me, Mams Taylor. How are you doing, sir? I'm great, man. Good to see you, Laid Back. I like, uh, you know, all the eye emojis, eye emoji, <laughs> couple of DMs we've had, but, but now it's nice to thank you for having me on absolutely man thank you for taking out the time like you said you was you wasn't feeling too good so hopefully you know you get back hopefully you feel better soon let's talk about yes. let's talk about did you ever see this happening with your vision of misfits from the beginning did you see it expanding and, and becoming what it is today at the very beginning when you guys first sat down and talked about it um, to be honest with you, it was one of the first conversations I had with KSI when I found out he was boxing Logan Paul part two. Mm -hmm. So I said to him early on, um, I said, look, you are, you are, um, an entrepreneur, you know, you're a boss instead of doing this for other promoters. Why don't you own your promotion? Mm. Why don't we do where we can be creative and make sure that you're not just working away, making everybody else the big bucks and taking an upfront fee because mm. he's got the base and he's got the following and the loyalty and he's built that up over so many years. So it made a lot of sense to really 
to really capitalize on that and and make sure that long after he retires he has a business that just keeps on uh supplying him with passive income even though he's so passionate about it i think he's going to be involved in some capacity for a very long time if not you know if not permanently um but that's that's the key is like you tap into things that you're passionate about mm -hmm. and your clients are passionate about and when it aligns then you have something like misfits boxing where you can see when you're watching it that a lot of work and passion and sincerity has gone into it it's mm -hmm. not oh let's go make some money let's make some bread and and do a cash grab this is like we want to build this thing it's the right. same thing that went into prime um the energy um from ksi and the commitment and and we love the product and we we enjoy drinking it and 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 that's the key i think a lot of people don't get for longevity long term it's not about oh what's the check take the check then you don't do the promo right and then mm. your stock goes down when your product doesn't work right you know so then people don't trust your product the next time but when you get it right and people see that you're sincerely into it this is mm. not just about money this is about what KSI uses that word all the time legacy then i think the trust builds and people are like okay they got their stamp on this that means it must be thorough it must be good it must be well researched it must be something that we should at least check out you know so basically what i'm hearing is because you started out through passion it wasn't nothing that just it was going to spiral and and go where it was going to go just because you guys went into it with a passionate and like like you said, KSI is not just all about the, oh, let's make some money. He's about legacy. He's about how do I stamp myself in whatever field I go in. So I respect that, even with the music. You know what I'm saying? He's not just doing music to do music. How He's getting number ones. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to be that guy. So I definitely get what you're saying when it comes to actually putting passion in and not just chasing a check. You can get money many, a million type of ways. But when you really focus in and harness in into your passion and the things that you really care about, that's when you really start to see those things blossom and, and grow all around you. So, yeah, man, I'm with you on that. Let's oh, talk yeah. about... Hundred... Go ahead. A hundred percent. And I think it's a learning process because you've got to, you've got to really see what... For, for us at Proper Loud, the first thing is... For our philosophy is our clients' mental and physical well-being making sure that they are mentally in a good place physically in a good place and make sure okay are you being pushed too hard is it let's talk let's have these conversations it's not just about hey i got you this deal you want to do this you want to do that it's about how do you feel about it are you passionate about it and that's been a learning process for me it's not like day one of me becoming a manager many years ago that i you know I, I knew that was what it was the philosophy developed over time and that's the number one priority number two priority is your brand and your um your relationship with your fans and that's a long-term thing that you've got mm -hmm. to develop so you've got to think three four five steps ahead sometimes and think how will fans react how will they feel this is why we never did the nfts we never did the uh <laughs> bitcoin stuff because we didn't think that we were providing a value to fans that would be long term. And we didn't care that there's, believe me when I tell you, bro, um, we've turned down hundreds of millions worth in deals. That's hundreds of millions of dollars that uh, could have gone in in the pockets of KSI and, and the team and everything else. And we've, we're just like, no, because we plan on legacy and being around for a long time. We don't want to do something we're not sure on. We don't want to do something that fans aren't going to be interested in. Now, um, at the same time, so those those are the two uh, two first pillars. The third pillar is the money, because of course, as, as his manager, as his business partner, I also know his value and his worth, and I don't want him to do something where it devalues what he's worth. You know, right. his time is worth a lot of money, so. Mm -hmm. So there is those three things really on the whole, um, and that's that applies to all of our clients, you know. So it's about building wealth, building um, legacy more than anything. Um, and yeah, I think that philosophy keeps you honest and it keeps you passionate. And the trust between you and the consumer and the fans who feel like they're a part of your family, really, with KSI especially, 
he's got a very honest relationship with his fan base. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's kind of been the building blocks for us. Nah, that's super dope, especially what you're talking about mental health and making sure you're tackling that first to make sure, hey, are you even okay to even go for this? Should we take a minute? Should we hold off for a second? Everything is in perfect timing. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to rush things. You can just, hey, okay, let's let's hold off on this one and then let's go to the next one. So making sure that you're in the right place to maneuver and, and maneuver in the right proper way. So I definitely get you on that and I respect you for that too. But let's get into your last event, man. 009, man. How how was it? Of course, uh, we had the the headline fight with uh, Idris Virgo and and Chalmers, and we had Face Temper and Ginty, and we had. So what what is your whole like? I guess reaction to it all after the dust is settled and another you know great event. You had you know competitive bouts. You had not so competitive. You know, it's a boxing fight. You know what I'm saying? It's a boxing event. Some things are going to be more competitive than others. Some fights are going to be, and you're trying to figure it out. So. What did you think about the whole experience? I loved it. I think the general feedback I've seen is it's one of the n best, most enjoyable non-pay-per-view events that we've put on. Um, and I think it was right up there. It was very fun. It was fun for me as a fan because I'm a fan of combat sports. I'm a fan of boxing first yeah. and foremost. You know, so when I get to sit down and 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 watch these fights, it's it's something um, I want to be entertained by too. Because if I'm not, then I know we're in trouble. You know, <laughs> so um, there were a couple of there were a couple of um, matches that maybe uh, there was a little distance in in their talent, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you don't know that in advance. Like arms, arms really beat master ugwe pretty pretty convincingly without mm -hmm. much off from ugwe but if you watched ugwe training and you watched arms's last fight mm -hmm. and you saw the polls on twitter mm -hmm. most people had ugwe winning that fight just mm -hmm. from what they'd seen so arms surprised everybody and you know the level of commitment he's put into this uh i i think none of us it was unbeknownst to us all so it happens and you don't yeah. want to create mismatches but at the same time let's go to traditional boxing you're a traditional boxing fan yep. i would say 90 plus percent of boxing matches are mismatched hey listen hey listen i'm gonna keep it 100 with you i'm gonna keep it 100 with you when i first got into this space and i was training and i'm training with these pros and stuff like that and i started seeing like these dudes who they fighting and i'm like I'm like, yo, this dude record is like five and 25. You know what I mean? I'm like, how was that even? I'm like, and then they say, hey, it's boxing. So you also hear in the traditional side that it's a lot of fighters with a lot of inflated numbers until you really get in there and you fight somebody that's of equal competition. A lot of people get their numbers boosted. They go and fight these scrubs and then they come up and they get this record. And then they go out there and now it's time to see, is this record really who you are? Or was it inflated a little bit? So you're right, it is on the traditional side as well, you know what I mean? Like some, they do inflate it sometimes. So yeah, I, I have seen that. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, they they see a prospect and then they want to build that prospect. So they they literally bring in what they call journeymen to come and fill that void and play that role. Once in a blue moon, the journeyman might surprise everyone yeah. and get yeah. get in a lucky punch. Listen, Buster Douglas, who expected him to be Mike? nobody you know nobody. <laughs> nobody i was I, I think that's the first time i cried as a young kid like i, I was just i was such a huge tyson fan i stayed yeah. up till 3 a.m i couldn't believe it but now we know the backstory of why he lost and a lot of other things mm -hmm. um um a lot of factors that played into it but at, at the end of the day it can happen upsets can happen and they're great for the sport mm -hmm. because it's a talking point you know mm -hmm. and um then the rematch is set up and so on but on the whole, I think traditional boxing has that far more than we do. We, we are a mm. little bit closer to the UFC where most of our fights are competitive, even though there are times where someone comes to you and says, let's say they're an A-list fighter mm -hmm. and they say, hey, ma'am, I want to have um, all their management team come and say, hey, I want my guy to have a warm up fight. He's had some ring rust. He hasn't been in. Let's give him a relatively, um, you know, not too much of a complicated or challenging fight. Mm -hmm. Then I've got to go to find that person and say, hey, you know, you're not the favorite, 
you know the odds are against you. How do you feel about this fight? And they're like, look, I'm going to train for it. I'm going to do my best and I'm, I, I'm going to win. Perfect example. To coach. Perfect example. Ganty. And yes, Faye's temper. I, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad Perfect that. example of that, right? Go ahead. I'm listening. Ginty, come on. Didn't you think maybe this Ginty knows something I don't? Like the way he was promoting. Hey, listen, I ain't going to lie to you, Mavs. When I was looking at that footage, I was like, nah. Well, he was promoting. The... Now, he was promoting. I give him that. He was promoting his ass off. But when I was seeing those clips that he was posting, I was like, I don't know. That's just me. Yeah. Though. But go ahead. That's that's true. I think I think before we saw those clips, though, we were like, curious, <laughs> right? <laughs> Poor Gin. You know, Ginty came up to me in the after party that night about six or seven times. I'm sure he was having a drink. Came and said, Mams, can I get back on Misfits, please? I, I I know I could do better. He's a sweet kid and he, he trains hard. But some people don't have, you know, that natural kind of gift. But that doesn't mean they can't get better through hard exactly. work. Exactly. You know? And that's one thing about boxing that's true. If you put the work in... You can get the results out of it. So definitely shout out to Ginty, man. I talked to Ginty. He's super cool. I definitely uh, wished him well on his fight. You know what I mean? So uh, definitely there's no dig at Ginty, but we were just talking about the phase temper and the Ginty and the uh, people that you think might be ready for certain levels and they're not just there yet. That don't make them horrible fighters. It just means you're not just ready just yet. You know what I mean? So go back to the drawing board, go back to the gym, go back and train, go back and, and watch the, the film and see what you need to do to improve. That's all this. That's one thing I love about boxing is that you can improve if you put the work in. That's almost with anything, but boxing especially, you can become better if you are gonna be dedicated. If you're gonna be staying down and making sure that you're paying attention to the details and boxing is all about details. So definitely, um. Shout out to uh, to Ginty and Face Temper. Uh, also, moving forward because we got the big one coming up. You know, we got the big prime Misfits uh, boxing going on with KSI and Logan and Dylan. I wanted to ask you because I seen you on Twitter earlier talking to Dylan, man. Because this is what I got to say about Dylan, man. Dylan, he stars a feud with Logan Paul, right? But awkwardly, I'm sitting back watching. I'm like, this dude is a genius when it comes to the marketing side. It might be awkward. It might not be tasteful. However you may see it. But when it comes to getting eyeballs on what he's trying to do, he's definitely accomplishing that goal. So I just want to see, what is your thoughts on the whole Dylan, Logan, that whole fiasco? He, he, he pulling out everything, drug tests. He's pulling out a uh, scam on the, the referees. He's pulling out everything. Yeah, I mean, look, I try to stay out of it. It's two fighters that are, you know, they're gonna fight each other. I'm not yeah. gonna be in that ring. So it's yeah. not like I wanna interfere, but when I feel something being said that tarnishes the reputation potentially of the promotion, mm. I've got to step in and make a correction. Okay. So when Dylan says something like, oh, Logan has the ref, bro, Logan doesn't have a clue who the referee is going to be. We don't know which referee it's going to be. It's, it's the Professional Boxing Association sanctioning this. So they choose the referees. They choose the judges. Logan won't know until he's in that ring who his referee is or actually right beforehand in the locker room wow. uh, when the referee talks to the fighters. So he won't know that. And it's not like, to be honest, we have to trust the PBA because that's our that's our sanctioning body. Mm -hmm. So not like I'm going to say, hey, who's refereeing this fight? Who's judging on this card? It's not really in our control. Um, and it's not something that Logan has any say so in whatsoever. He cannot request a referee change, neither can KSI, neither can anyone. So that's how it works. So when Dylan says things like that, that are outlandish and a little bit for attention, I, I have no choice but to step in and say something. And the steroid testing, again, I've got to tell the truth. Logan has never been against any steroid testing. The standard steroid testing the PBA to take place for Logan um, and for Dylan for that fight. Now, if Dylan wanted USADA to be involved, Dylan could have, or his lawyer, before he signed the contract, they could have said, hey, we suspect this is going on. 
This is the type of testing we would like implemented. And because they are both of such high stature um, and they're both, you know, bringing a lot of business to the pay-per-view, we would absolutely accommodate what they ask for and, and agree in their contract. If a fighter says, hey, I'm not fighting if you don't test uh, this certain way, then, then, you know, that's something that should be predetermined, not talked about after the fact that everyone signed their contracts and ready to go. But once again, the testing was always intended to happen and it will happen. Wow, man, this guy, I think that fight right there, just because of so much stuff that's around it and the whole feud between those two people are really gonna be tuned in to see when it's time, when that bell ring, what is gonna happen? I'm gonna be honest, because Dylan, I've been seeing his footage and uh, I don't know. I just, Logan been looking strong out here. You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm gonna say. I mean, he, I, I respect everybody that get in the ring. You know what I'm saying? I respect anybody that chooses to, to, to go down this path, but it's gonna be a war. I feel like that one's gonna be a war, man. But when it comes to the KSI, oh, yeah. KSI and, and Fury, what, what, what do you think this does for KSI legacy? if he does go through this guy, knowing that Jake Paul couldn't? I mean, it speaks volumes, you know? It's, it's, we tried to make the KSI Jake Paul fight happen with earnestly, with all of our, I even tweeted this fight will happen in 2023 because I really, really thought it would. And it looked like wow. it was going to happen um, after many negotiations that failed. Finally, it looked like we were the two sides were getting together and it was going to happen without any issue. And then they did a complete U-turn on us, you know. Mm. So at that point, KSI was like, all right, we're not going to fight Jake. Let me cement my legacy here in this crossover boxing space by beating the guy who beat Jake. Mm. So that was the initial focus of it. And honestly, I think, I think this is going to be, this is something that, for KSI, he loves to be the underdog. He loves a challenge that people don't think is surmountable. And if you see the odds, it's been six to one against KSI. Yeah. People all over the boxing community, fans, all saying that Tommy Fury is going to knock out KSI and all of this stuff. So he loves being in that position. And, you know, Tommy doesn't know what KSI knows, you know? Right. So, so in it, KSI knows what he's been doing for training, who he's been sparring, how he's been doing. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, look, there's an unknown part of Tommy. Has he improved since the Jake Paul fight? How has he improved? What are the adjustments? So it's going to be, I'll tell you this, like, I'm very, very confident in KSI. I believe in him because he believes in himself more than anyone I know. Mm -hmm. And that will that he has, it's a stubbornness, man, that is hard to overcome. You know what I mean? Like, you might be more skilled than someone in certain things, but at the end of the day, that stubbornness, that will to defy all the odds, it's such a great force and an energy that it carries a lot of weight. So let's see, but I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm gonna be on the edge of me, my seat. I'm gonna be sweating. I'm gonna be nervous, but I am for all of his fights. You know? <laughs> That's yeah. like my little brother. So, so being there, I'm always, I'm like, I'm kind of like the dad that's like seeing his son in there. So I'm going to be a bag of nerves for sure. Hey, man, I'm, I'm going to be tuned in for sure. Uh, this is a, a huge car. You got a tag team on there. You know, uh, what are some, I guess, a couple fights that you, you, you can't wait to actually see in person? Because it's a big it's a big card. It's a lot of fights on there. It's a lot of different stuff going on. So what are some of the fights that you want to lock in on and be like, yo, I can't wait to see these guys? I mean, the two most obvious ones outside of the main events is the rematch between Dean and Walid. Mm -hmm. Probably two of our most skilled boxers. You know, I would agree. And if, you, if you saw them on 003, um, to this day, I think that might be the best Misfits boxing match we've ever had. And the comeback mm. was insane. Yeah, he got Dean dropped. Like he got dropped again and again and then came back. And he came and back. Came, yeah. And that take that's that will I'm talking about. The mm -hmm. kid does not lose. You know, mm -hmm. some people have that dog, some people mm -hmm. don't. That's what they call you it know? too. They call it the dog. You got that dog yeah. in them, you're right. Yes. So you got and, Dean and, and, and Walid and go ahead. 
and then Salt Poppy Slim is a mega mega fight as well. That you know both. How did that happen? Because it looked like it wasn't going to happen for a while. I don't know if that was marketing, but it looked like it wasn't going to happen for a while. <laughs> you looked away. I don't know what that means. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this: it's um, I think there's some marketing involved here and okay. there, and I think that provides excitement and. I would be lying to you if I didn't say that a lot of my inspiration for some ideas doesn't come from WWE, formerly WWF and WCW. Yeah. Yeah. I was a huge fan, huge UFC fan, right? I'm talking right uh, at the beginning of UFC when no one had any, uh, there weren't no weight classes, mm. you know? Um, I'm UFC won, Ken Shamrock and uh, Hoist Grace. You're taking it all. back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I've been a fan forever. Like, I was glued to it. I needed to know everything. Mm -hmm. um, and thing as well. So, I think it's a mishmash of everything. But what does WWE have over all of these uh, other ones is the entertainment level. And to look, mm -hmm. you never ever, obviously, we're never ever going to be able to control what happens inside the ring. That's that's a sportsman. Uh, that's, that's the sportsmanship between two fighters trying to beat the crap out of each other and get that win. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's something that is never ever going to be premeditated ever. That's we've got gambling sites that are involved and, and that kind of thing. So if anyone thinks, oh, this is like WWE, it's not. These guys are fighting each other for real, one hundred percent. And I think that's pretty clear to everyone. But um, absolutely. But a lot of, but a lot of people outsiders who talk about us, they they throw these accusations out. You know, and that pisses me off because it diminishes the hard work these kids put into it. Mm. You're talking a guy who's making, um, you know, whether it's gaming videos or or um, or doing uh, dances on TikTok. They've switched their lifestyle around and train with their whole regime like a mm -hmm. boxer, mm -hmm. training two days in fight camp and putting their heart and soul into it. And then there's some casual guy saying, "Oh, it's it's these fights are fixed." No, that's. <laughs> That stuff that annoy that irks me if I'm honest with you because they've right. never even. But um, but yeah, to answer the initial question, <laughs> some of the stuff that I can do, like the entrances, the mystery opponents, the mm -hmm. tag team, that's definitely um, the entertainment side that I like to I like to bring about and plant some seeds where I can I can start. Like I'm a shit stirrer. I'm a professional <laughs> shit stirrer. So I gotta plant seeds to create a beef between two guys. But at the end of the day. When it's all over, they usually touch gloves, have a right. hug, and hands. And you've sparred, right? Mm -hmm. Don't. At the end of the day, when you're sparring someone, you're usually friends with people you're sparring with in your gym. Mm -hmm. You know, unless an outsider comes, and then it's a little bit. But right. but you have a beer with those guys afterwards, or you drink. If you don't drink, you have a water with them. You go out with them. You hang out. You have a camaraderie with them, and mm -hmm. that's what a. I don't want to say a men's sport, but it's a masculine trait that happens because we got some amazing female fighters in this world of boxing that's for sure mm -hmm. uh, but but it's a camaraderie and a respect that you develop for someone after punching each other in the face you know there's nothing yeah, like it's a respect it. it's a respect you know what i'm saying for you to go in there and and tangle with somebody for real and it's a respect man you gotta respect i always say you gotta respect whoever steps in the ring i don't care if you like their skill level you don't like their skill level you think they train hard they didn't train hard the fact that you walked in that ring and you went in there and put in work, I got to respect that, man. A lot of people not doing that. They talk about it. They, it's a lot of stuff being talked about, but nobody put the gloves on. Nobody put the mouthpiece in and nobody put them big gloves on. Speaking of the podcast. But um, also, so one of the fights I was looking at, I think it's the Ken Kenny with uh, Anthony Taylor. Big so, fight. Uh, it's, a, it's for a belt, right? Yes, sir. OK, so my question was, I know. I've been seeing people talk about Anthony Taylor, especially with him being a pro fighter before Misfits, right? And they're like, he's just running through all the influencers. And they kind of feel like it should be a separation between the pros that fought professionally and the influencers. And I think I've seen you say something about that too. Like it should be like some type of a split between those guys. So what's your thoughts on that and this fight right here coming up? Well, there's a pro division that we're mm -hmm. launching with a pro tournament where the winner gets a million dollars and becomes the first Misfits pro champion. Mm -hmm. So that's happening. 
um, at some point early next year. Um, and so that's definitely something that we, we want to make clear. But Anthony Taylor was an MMA pro fighter. Right. If you, so you do the test with these guys of seeing how pro are they? How good are they? And mm -hmm. no disrespect to AT, he's such an entertaining guy right. and he a lot of work and commitment into this space. Absolutely. Um, but he would not do very well in traditional professional boxing as, you know, I'm, Again, no disrespect to him. I'm saying. How do you know that, though? Because I think I think he would. Okay, so Idris Virgo beat him. That was the test for him, and he okay. beat him very convincingly. Okay. And Idris Virgo is a pro. Yeah, he's, he's a pro. He, yeah, he's. Well, I think he's 14 and 0, 13 and 0. Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so AT didn't really have any offensive answers for him that were meaningful. AT did hang in there with Tommy Fury and went the distance with him. He's a tough guy. He's a tough guy. But I think he would maybe be a journeyman at the highest levels of boxing. He wouldn't break through and be able to fight guys like Charlo successfully. I don't think he would do well against the Errol Spencers and, and you know, and even Chris Eubank Jr. Go and those, the, Anthony, those are light guys, too. You're talking about 147, 154 guys. You're not even talking about the 175 guys like Better Viv and, uh, you know, those type of guys. That's Bivol, Bivol Bivol, and guys like that. And Anthony Canelo. Taylor's, yeah, and Anthony Taylor used to be, um, I think he competed in MMA at 150, 155, something like mm. that as well. So his weight range is crazy. Maybe yeah. the craziest one on my <laughs> roster. Yeah. But... But yeah, man, he's he's great for this space, and I think is he he's kind of a gatekeeper. But he he's earned his shot now to be the champion because I know we know Logan and him had a spar. Logan got the best of him, pretty you know he knocked him down. Um, so then you you put that into the mix as well as his performance against Idris Virgo, and then you see him beat Salt Puppy. Now he beat Salt Puppy, but it was a narrow win. It wasn't like he wiped the floor with salt, right? Mm. He didn't wipe the floor with the guy. So it's right. not that much right. of a gap. Right. So Ken, if you saw Kenny's last two fights, that kid has improved tremendously. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think he's still at the up, upper echelon of influencer crossover boxing and at the lower echelon of pro boxing. So he should stick around in this area where if someone wants to fight like a KSI or a Jake Paul or a Logan Paul, they mm -hmm. got to get through Anthony Taylor. You know, he's like gotcha. one of those, I think. So who, who who are you picking in that fight? Or what do you expect out of that fight? I think, I think for me, other than KSI, I've got to stay neutral and just say that I've made these fights as 50-50 as I could. And I think that most of them are 50-50 fights, you know, mm -hmm. while Dean, um, Anthony Taylor and King Kenny, 50-50 for sure, you know, if it depends also on who executes their game plan the best and who's ready for their plan A not to work and if they have a strong plan B and a plan C. Absolutely. Because that's, that's where your team come into play. It's not, these kids mm -hmm. are becoming more and more skillful. So getting in the ring and just doing your best and wh whoever it is, that doesn't work the way that it used to you know <laughs> right. what i mean right you well hey, have a hey you right the game plan and you got to be able to stick to it even though your opponent is trying to take you out of it you know what i'm saying so it's two of those people going at it and trying i'm trying to impose my will i'm trying to impose my will and who is going to win that night who's going to have that willpower that stubbornness that dog that you talk about so it, yes that dog and that intelligence the boxing iq is very yeah. very you know i don't think we talk about it enough some people have it naturally some people develop it but why is floyd mayweather arguably one of the best boxers of all time defensively incredible mm -hmm. uh, his boxing IQ and the guy you know what he he didn't get hit too much he didn't get mm -hmm. to hit too often mm -hmm. and and that's that's through the drills and his intelligence in the boxing ring that that intelligence comes in very very handy and what what mayweather would do he'd be like a computer analyzing mm -hmm. for the first three rounds what this guy does what the movements are what are the tells like a poker player pro poker player checking out your tells every time you get a good hand or a bad hand mm -hmm. he would check that out take that in 
and act accordingly and then obliterate most people. Absolutely, man. Floyd is one of my favorite fighters just because of that defensive and reactions and counter punching is just a great overall brilliant mindset, sweet science type of boxer, man. Yes, but exactly. I got one more question, then we're going to get out of here, man. I don't want to hold you up too much longer. I definitely appreciate you for stopping by, man, and kicking it with us, man. But the appreciate elephant in the room. Oh, no problem. No problem. The elephant in the room, the laid back misfits boxing debut or what what is up with that people been hitting me i haven't been saying anything i've been keeping it low-key and chill but people have been hitting me about it they think i'm the mystery opponent for this guy the mystery opponent for that guy i'm just sitting there like uh maybe maybe not so what what do you have to say about that stuff well like you know i gotta tell you i felt really bad people don't know i don't think people know you were supposed to have a fight um where was it in new orleans right i was think you or the Nashville, or the Nashville card, maybe. It was a Nashville. It was a couple of them. It was a, yeah. a few of them. Through for various reasons, we weren't able to facilitate that, and I gave you my word and my promise that you are on the next U.S. card. So as soon as I have details for that, it's on. It's on, and you'll be the first to know because you've been patient, and I'm so I'm grateful for that. And it's we've got a very respectful dialogue going. Absolutely. So yeah, you have my word, man. You'll be on that next card. Absolutely. Well, you heard it here first from the man himself, man. Appreciate you for all of your time, man. Appreciate you for what you do in the space. I know you work hard. People say you're one of the hardest workers putting the matches together behind the scenes and all that. I know him. I, we, I've been trying to, we've been working together for a while, so I know how difficult it can be. You know what I'm saying? Just on my end, seeing how things didn't work out and all that type of stuff. So I get it. I appreciate you, man. I wish you nothing but success. You and your team, you and the whole Misfits boxing scene. And hopefully we talk soon, man, and we'll see what's going on with the next uh, U.S. fight, man. Absolutely. Any, any last right. words? Um, next KSI song, Trash or Pass. <laughs> hey, I'll let you know in the next one. What, is he dropping another song soon? We, we got we to gotta put some music out, man. I'm, okay. I miss... I miss music as well, so so yeah, I'm gonna send it to you. But I remember, I, I think I've seen, I've definitely seen all of your KSI reviews. I'd always look for it. There's, yeah, there's doing a couple others where I really respect the opinion of, you know. So, but hey, we got a lot of passes. The the second half of our releases, we got a lot of passes. <laughs> hey man, hey, he was getting better. He was in the gym. He was in there getting his vocals right. You know what I mean? And he started coming through, man. And I'm not a hater. If you good, yeah. you good. You know what I mean? So I respect that. I just give my honest opinion. Even when it comes to this boxing stuff, man, I'm not hating on anybody. I'm just giving my honest opinion, my assessment. You don't have to like it. If you don't like it, then it is what it is. But I'm just going to be me, man. So, hey, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for your time. Uh, we will talk soon. Take care of yourself. Feel well soon. Thank you, brother. All right, Thanks. man. Bless. Take care, man. Absolutely, man. Peace. All right, guys, that was the first episode of the Big Gloves Podcast. And you know, we here. We here. We're going to shake it up a little bit, too, man. We're going to be respectful, but we're going we gonna to keep it real. Um, like I said, if you want to be a sponsor of the show, you can do that. Big Gloves Podcast at gmail.com. You can reach out to us, man. Also, the merch will be under this video. It's super fire, too, man. There's some exclusive stuff. Um, and I'm going to see y'all in the next one. Who I got for Canelo Charlo? I think I got, ah, shit. I'm gonna go with Charlo. I'm gonna go with Charlo, man. I think Canelo probably slowed down just a little bit. And I think Charlo hungry. He got that lion mentality. He got that dog in him that, that Mams was talking about. So I'm gonna go with Charlo, man. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but we'll see. It's a big fight. I'm excited for it. And I'm excited for this whole 2023 boxing has been astronomical, man. So shout out to everybody that fought this year. Everybody that's going to fight coming up. And yeah, I'm going to catch y'all in the next one, man. Till next time, self-love and positivity. Fire Squad, I got you and you know it. Bow.